Hello, sports fans. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today, with baseball season right on the horizon, we're going to discuss my Elmwood Stratomatic League baseball team, the Providence Grays, the way they look right now, and, um, and where we stand uh, going into the draft, which will be in uh, the second half of February. And then what our needs are and what the team looks like. And we're doing that right after the intro. Hello, and we're back. As I said, I'm going to go over the um, Providence Grays, my team in the Elmwood Stratomatic League, which is the league that I've been in the longest, um, and uh, talk about what the team looks like and what do you guys think of it after, you know, after I'm done going over it, and uh, we'll see. So I'm going to go around the diamond, and then I'm going to go around the outfield. Uh, so, starting at catcher, we have Martin Maldonado at catcher. Now, he wasn't very good last year. He hit only 213 and had 12 home runs, but he is a great defensive catcher. He'll have a good arm behind the plate, probably be a catcher one. Um, offhand, I don't remember what the ratings are, so bear with me on that, but I'm just estimating in a lot of cases. Um, some of, A couple of them I know, but it's, you know. So anyway, then uh, then at DH, we're going to have Steven Piscotti right now, but that's pending the draft. We'll see what happens after the draft. Um, he is probably better suited to be a backup outfielder for me, but he hit 249 with 13 homers last year. Had a down year. Um, I obtained him uh, mainly because in our league um, we have – a free agency period, generally of five years, but players that are drafted in the first round have a 10-year uh, free agency period before they become free agents. And Piscotti was one of the guys that when he was drafted, he was um, um, he was drafted in the first round, so he was a 10-year free agent, which means he has about, has about uh, six or seven left. So I wanted to get somebody that had a lot of uh, time left that I don't have to worry about his free agent clock. And he should generally do better than he did last year. Um, at first base, we got a draft pick of mine from two years ago, Cody Bellinger. And he has, um, since I drafted him the first round, he has eight years left. But he was great last year, too. He hit 305. He had a slash line of 305, 406, 1.035 for the OPS. So he's going to be the driving force in the lineup, but I have a few other good guys in the lineup too. Um, at second base, we got Joey Wendell out of Westchester University. Um, he can't play a full year, so he'll probably end up being a backup, uh, like a utility player for me instead of being my second baseman. But right now, we have a 20-keeper list, and then the draft fills out the rest of the between 20 and 40 um, guys that we have to fill out our roster. So I may end up in the draft with somebody who's I'm better suited playing at second base all year long than Wendell. And Wendell can't play all year anyway, so that's another reason why he'll eventually probably become a backup infielder. At shortstop, I got Timmy Anderson, my man from the White Sox, Timmy Anderson. He had a slash line of 335, 357, 865. Going to be great offensively, but Stratomatic has him as a shortstop four. So he's going to hurt me defensively, but I'm still kind of in a mode where I'm not quite there yet anyway, and you'll see that when I get done with the team. Um, we're not ready to win just yet, but I think the main components of the offense are in place for the coming years. Uh, then at third base, we're going to have Neil Walker. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll replace him because he can play all year 
And really, his slash line was 261, 344, 738, which is respectable. It's not great, but it's respectable. So I may not even replace him. He may end up being my third baseman. Uh, now in left field, going from left around to right, in left field I'll have Joey Gallo. Now Joey Gallo hit 253 last year, and he had a slash line of 253, 389, 986. He also has, generally, he usually has a pretty good throwing arm in the outfield, maybe a negative three, negative two, negative three. So he's going to be a, a good player. Now he was injured a lot last year, but... In Strat, it just depends on how much the injury comes up. But he can play all year as long, except for the times where he gets injured. In center field, I'm going to have Jason Hayward. He was okay. I mean, he'll probably be a center field two because I think he was a right field one. So um, that you know that would make him a center field two. And um, he uh, he had a slash line of 251, 343, 772. Hit 20 home runs. Yeah, pretty good, you know. Um, he'll probably end up being an outfielder. I don't know if he'll be in um, center. It depends on the draft again. Who I draft, who I can get it where. Um, you know, we'll see. Now, in right field, the current right fielder will be Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper. And he had a slash line last year of 260, 372. 882 and he's a right field too and he has a decent arm so uh so he's not he's not bad so that's around the diamond the starters um i also have adam engel as a backup outfielder he's a good defensive outfielder didn't hit much and he doesn't qualify to play all year so he's going to be a backup outfielder even after the draft everything is known he'll probably be a backup outfielder for me but you know defensive replacement uh, my starting pitching staff is going to be headed off by David Price, who last year was 7-5 and five with a 428 earned run average and a 131 whip. Um, in Stratomatic, in a, uh, in a condensed league that's not, you know, 24 to 30 teams, a left-hander with a 131 whip is, is going to do not that great. But he should be good enough, especially for the offense I'm going to have. Uh, Chase Anderson was 8-4 and four with a 421 earned run average and a 127 whip, and he'll be my second starter. So the top two are not that bad. Uh, then we've got, then you drop off quite a bit, because then we go to Kevin Gosman, who was 3-9 and nine with a 572 earned run average and a 142 whip. And then we go to Kyle Freeland, who was terrible last year, but he was a Cy Young, either he won the Cy Young or he was a Cy Young candidate two years ago. And he's young, so I'm hoping for a bounce back from him. And the Rockies pretty much have to start him. They don't have a lot of other options. So I, I'm hoping for a big bounce back from Freeland. But he was 3-11 and with a 673 earned run average and 158 whip. And yes, he will pitch for me because I don't have any real choice in the matter. And then you got Carlos Rodon, who was uh, hampered by injury last year, only pitched 36 innings. But he was 3-2 and two with a 519 earned run average and a 144 whip. And that's one of my White Sox boys. So, And he's another guy that was under contract for a long time, so he still has like six or seven years left. So I like that about him too. Then you got Eliza Hernandez. He was three and five with a 503 earned run average and a 124 whip in 82 innings last year. Doesn't seem like he's in the Marlins plans this year, but baseball seasons are long. Injuries happen. You have to think you're going to see Eliza Hernandez at some point, especially if he can do well in the minors. But that's probably where he's going to start the season. And then uh, headlining my uh, bullpen is Kenley Jensen, or Jansen, who was, he had a 371 earned run average for LA and a 106 whip. And he struck out 80 guys in 63 innings. So he had kind of a bounce back year. The ERA is a little high for a closer, which is what he'll be for me. But, you know, you got to live with that. 
And then rounding out the bullpen, um, you got Tim Miza, who was not good statistically as far as his ERA and, and his whip, but he did strike out more than one person per inning. Um, and then we also have um, Joaquin Soria, who had a whip of around 106, 107, something like that, 105. So he should be pretty good, although he did have a high ERA, just like Jansen did. So that's basically the team in a nutshell. This is how it looks when you uh, map it all out. So what do you guys think of this team? You think, uh, think I got a chance with a good draft? Now the draft is not going to be all that great for me. My first pick is going to be near the top of the second round. And uh, if I can get one of the good young starting pitchers in Major League Baseball, I'm going to grab them there. And then that might help with my pitching staff going forward. I mean, a lot of the pitching staff going forward in the out years is going to rely on Freeland bouncing back, Rodon staying healthy, and starting to pitch to the potential that the White Sox thought they could get from him. Chase Anderson hopefully pitching more innings in Toronto than he did in Milwaukee. I mean, that was ridiculous in Milwaukee. The council kept taking him out after four and two-thirds, four and a third, five innings, five and a third innings. That That's all he ever pitched in Milwaukee. So hopefully he can do better than that. And then, of course, Price bouncing back, although B Price is getting older, so I'm not necessarily looking at Price as bouncing back but even if he can maintain at least what he did and stay healthy and pitch more innings, that would be a great help. And then Gosman, we'll see. Um, Gosman pitching in San Francisco this year, but they moved the walls in and they lowered the height of the walls in San Francisco. So, you know, to help their offense. So that's not going to help Gosman. So we'll see what happens with him, although he should pitch better than he pitched last year. He was terrible last year. So we'll see. And then again, like I said about Hernandez, not in the Marlins' main plans, but injuries happen. And then when injuries happen, we'll see and see how he does in the minors. So, uh, you know, I, I, obviously I have to build out the bullpen. I have to get a couple of decent starters or even good young starters if I can. Um, the offense is, I mean, the offense is pretty good and it's going to be in place for at least the next couple of years. I have most all of those guys for at least a couple of years. Some of them much longer. Bellinger I have for eight more years. Walker I've got for up to four more years, um, three or four more years. He's playing in Philadelphia this year. We'll see what he does. Um, Harper I have for about six or seven more years. Um, or maybe five or six, five or six more years, something like that. Um, so, you know, we'll see. Um, Piscotti, hoping for a bounce back from Piscotti, and I have him for about six more, six or seven more years. So, you know, the offense is there. I mean, I think the offense is there, and that's always easier to build anyway, as evidenced by the fact that I managed to be able to do that. I mean, my, my team two years ago was horrible. It was horrible offensively and and pitching wise, and now it's you know really good offensively. It just needs work on the pitching staff. So it'd be interesting uh, to hear what everybody out there thinks of my team. Um, who do you think my priority should be? Uh, should I use that second pick not on a young starter, but just on another offensive piece, maybe at third base or second? and try to just really out-muscle my, my pitching staff? What do you think? I mean, that's an approach, right? Uh, I would be interested to hear what you think, so leave your comments below. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed, even if you only watch the channel every once in a while. Uh, ring the bell, you'll know when I put new videos out, and I may have something that's interesting to you that you wanna watch, and you'll know that if you subscribe and hit the bell. But for right now, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.